motorhome, glamping pod, log cabin. <laughs> We're not about that here. We do it proper. This is the outside in. Taking the outside in. For real. Welcome back to another video. Yes, I'm back out there, it's Boxing Day. But if I stand under this light, that's a bit better, so I don't have to the lights on. Um, this one's gonna be a chilled out one tonight. I am going to, well, I am going to a set of woods. I've only really been in once, so this is going to be completely, you know, I've not wrecked it, nothing like that. This one tonight is going to be like going off into the unknown. I don't know what I'm going to expect. Don't know what the, uh, the ground's going to be like to set up on. Hopefully, I'm going to find somewhere that isn't bogged out. It's certainly cold. It was about four degrees when I last checked. Let's see if it's any better than my big headlight on. Already it's totally pitch black. I did uh, want to get into the woods before I uh, started talking properly. There was a lot of eyes on me coming through that little village then as I come past the pub. If you recognise the area, the pub that I've come past on the corner, which wasn't in the video because there was people standing outside having a ciggy. Um, you'd hope that it was in the festive spirit, being Boxing Day and all that. However, coming past with all this gear on, it was, you know, I'm gonna turn that light up a bit. Yeah, it did look a bit dodgy, but you know. Anyway, when I said I haven't been here before, well, I have, but not sort of, you know, wrecking it out or, uh, it would have been in the days of me mountain biking and I just basically come through and, you know, so a lot of it is just what I remember coming through the, the one time but I've got a choice now. You can't see it, I'll show you in a moment, but I can either go left. Um, from what I can see at the moment, it looks like some real good areas. You know, the way the trees are. I can set up a tarp, I can set the tent up, because I do believe we're gonna have some rain tonight. Uh, or I can go right. Um, it just looks a completely different woodland to your left to your right but there doesn't look the same amount of cover on the left to the right and tonight I just really want to have a chilled one I can't be bothered with you know people seeing me tents and this like in the last video you'll see that it was the most unstealthiest stealth camp well it's 
wrong to even call it a stealth camp but anyway none of that this week just a nice boxing day chilled out one uh, so I'm going to turn you around and I'll show you what I can see right now which isn't a lot Yeah, so through there the trees do look a bit more, looks nice, nice and flat and I reckon, you know, if I go far enough in, no one's going to bother me. But then you've got this side, it just looks... But I do want to get right the way in, right in the middle of nowhere, sort of out of sight. So I'm going to go... I want to take the path right. I'm going to see what we end up with. What I'm hoping is I don't tread in any uh, pools of water that have uh, formed. Certainly feel the chill in here. The old down jacket will be coming on a bit before you know it. Right, I'm going to uh, turn the camera off because it's probably going to be the most boring video just seeing some guy go deep into the woods, so bring you back when I find a spot. Right, I found a spot where I'm going to set up for the night. It isn't massively off the way of the, uh, the main track, but I don't want to be walking for miles. Not with all the gear on my back, but I can safely say I'm a... Uh, out the way of General Joe Publi. Um, I'm certainly not alone in here tonight. Um, I can hear a, I've heard a lot of animals scuttling around and I must have spooked a deer because I've just heard it, heard it bolt. I've got to be honest, it did make me jump. Uh, didn't see it, I could hear it. One thing I didn't say today at the beginning of the video is I've been looking forward to this one. I'll tell you for why because I only decided sort of earlier on mid-morning that I was going to come out and do this. So yeah, it's been a, that's why there's been no, it's just, I did say last video I want to do, the next one's going to be a woodland one. This was the woods I had in mind. As I say, I have no idea what to expect tonight. You know, I've not really been in here before, so it could be an interesting one. So, the chair is officially set up, the outside in is officially open for Boxing Day. The trusty old lantern that I uh, showed you in last in the last video. I was going to say last week's video, but it wasn't even a week ago. We are officially open for business. The chair. 
and oh, a lovely bottle of the old Stella Artois unfiltered. Right, so ears open to everybody had a a good Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, if it's not your thing, I hope you had uh, some good time off work because obviously everywhere's shut. Um, I didn't get to drink yesterday because uh, I was Des, designated driver, uh, taking my partner Louise and the girls to the sisters for Christmas dinner and whatnot. She wanted to drink, so I stayed sober. I will tell a lie, I had one bottle of beer in the morning. But that was it, so so only going to make up for it tonight, Boxing Day and all that. And I tell you what, this camp looks so homely now with that lantern up there. I think I think that's the best nine quid I've spent in a long time. It is a really good lamp. I mean, you guys can't appreciate it like I can, because but I just know it's there. It's just giving out some lovely warm light. Yes, we spoke about the warm light. Um, bought some new stuff this week. This week, what am I saying this week? It ain't been a week since the last one. I've bought some more swag, some more gear. I'll talk about that in a bit. I've got the tent to set up. I am going to be setting the tarp up because I don't want to be sat in the rain tonight. Uh, I don't want to be sort of, yeah, well, not sat in the rain, but I don't want to be stuck in the tent. I do like to be outside the tent and just sleep in the tent. Uh, got lots of snacks. When you've seen how much I've got, I think, you know, I've gone a bit overboard, but so what, it's Boxing Day. But yeah, I'm going to enjoy this beer and then I'm going to get the tent set up. Cheers. Right, I'm pretty much all sorted out now. The tent's up. Uh, I mean, the kit's all organised. I can now sit in the chair. Have myself another bevy. But, I did say I was going to put the tarp up. But now I'm in second minds because I've looked at the weather and it's saying there isn't going to be any rain till about midnight. So... If I can do away with the tarp, it's less to pack away tomorrow. Um, I have positioned myself between two trees, so I can use the uh, trees as a ridge line. Put the tarp over the tent, so I can actually sit under the um, under the tarp at the opening of the tent. So in and out, stay dry. But I'm open. I really am open now. I'm not going to need it. I can just get on with just chilling out. That's what I've come here to do. Um, I'll show you what everything looks like in a moment. Back out in the Oyena 2 by OEX. As you'll notice now, I am a big fan of the tent, even though it's got a lot of negativity from YouTubers and such, but up till now, the kind of camping that I'm using it for, it's perfect. I mean, if I was going to be on the side of Snowdon or Ben Nevis or somewhere like that or up high peak at the peak district then you know I would sort of you know consider my options especially if it's going to be like gale force winds but then again if I knew it's going to be gale force winds there's a good chance I wouldn't be bothering putting a tent up I'd probably get in the bivy bag and find some good cover and sleep in the bivy bag I'm not going to have to worry about the tent being blown away because no tent is indestructible I don't care what anybody says Every tent has its limits, but anyway, right, I'm going to show you the setup, and there's one thing I'm going to point out that I read on a review, and I'm going to put them straight on this, so. Right, so here is the old uh, woodland setup. Oh, it's a bit crunchy with all the branches, but yeah. So we've got the tent, we have the occupied chair that has my down jacket on which I have to take off because I was getting a bit warm doing the tent. We've got some nobbies nuts, they're not nobbies, they're mine. But anyway, moving round. I'm 
that's the setup for the night looks pretty darn cozy to me and as i've said you've got the tree here and the tree opposite where if need be i can run my tarp across run the tarp across uh, and then i can obviously put my seat down here um, the rain won't get me there obviously under the tarp uh, right next right uh, one of the reviews was on about how the the inner of the tent touches the outer well a lot of that is to do with these guy lines here I seem to be noticing a lot of people are having these guy lines but they come in this way however if you look at the design of the tent you've got cathedral arch poles hence they go into a sort of a peak to obviously give you that extra bit of height same again over here now if your outer is touching the inner then I'm afraid to say that it's it's not the fault of the tent it's the person who's pitched it what you want to be doing is just putting your your guy lines coming this way now if you look that gives an indication of the 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 direction they want to go in keeping them obviously perpendicular to the pole and what you find is that just gives it enough tension that way enough tension in the opposite direction and it keeps this taut enough to keep that uh, fly sheet off your inner and pitching it like this every time I've used it I wasn't going to comment it on uh, on any previous videos because I don't feel like I'd used it enough but yeah even when I was uh, where was I at the gower with my daughter and we had a horrendous night of wind rain and by the sea by the seafront um, no condensation not not from the the outer touching the inner again I've always pitched it like this if I remember correctly but yeah so that's the way to go right what we got in here what have we got in here the usual milk we haven't got any pearl and backer tonight and the reason being is because Lidl wasn't open today oh dear oh dear sorry Lidl I've had to cheat on you with good old uh, Colesburg, uh, Colesburg export and I've had a few bottles of Stella Artois unfiltered uh, Doritos dip oh, I've got some lovely chicken bites courtesy of B&M pasta and sauce I don't actually know why I brought two packets I think my eyes are bigger than my belly the obligatory Boxing Day turkey and a bit of gammon in there. I'm going to mix that with some of this, keeping it very simple today. <laughs> Nothing like last uh, last time I was out. I uh, did a ribeye and all that. You know, the, if you watch the videos, uh, some what you call them, crunch nut cornflakes for the breakfast. And as you've already uh, seen, some Nobby's nuts. Right, I am uh, now nestled in my lovely chair, having another bottle. Cheers, guys. Got a full moon tonight. Um, the only thing is it's covered by lots of cloud, but that could mean the animal activity could be uh, a bit strong tonight. Not that I've heard anything since that uh, deer run off, but usually if you're in the woods, animals know you're there. They tend to avoid you, so I've found out. Apart from the muntjacks, they do like to bark a lot. Not heard any of them yet. Right, new gear. One second, bear with me. Right, my uh, sleep pad 
as I spoke about in the last video I think it's got a little tiny hole in it because I uh, let it self inflate then I put a few extra uh, puffs of air in there just to make it a little bit firmer I've been waking up and it's been pretty flat um, so I just thought first time it might have been me not screwed the valve up properly tried it again same thing did try and locate the leak on it it must be so small it could be like a tiny little bramble uh, pin prick but however right I wasn't going to bring that out today with me so I have got myself the OEX Traverse 5.0 um, from Go Outdoors uh, what I intend to do is I'm not going to throw the other one away my next step is I'm going to get it in the bath with some water locate the uh, where the air is coming from because it's definitely leaking and then obviously put a, a little patch on there repair it jobs are good and and I've said to Millie my daughter uh, she can have that one for her scouts so it's not going to go to waste I don't like throwing stuff away not for the sake of a little tiny pinhole uh, also new tent yes I know I've been bigging up the uh, the IE and the 2 and whatever else but the IE and the 2 is literally going to be my sort of my go-to tent for because I love the ten, uh, tunnel design I love the fact that I can move round in it you know it's it, a lot more robust than what people are led to believe because obviously you've got the uh, fiberglass poles whatever however uh, I have treated myself to the OEX Fox 2 version 2 um, the reason for that is one I got it in a sale um, trying to think how much it it was a little over 80 quid they're going for about 100 quid i uh, got it for a little over 80 quid um this also had a further 15 percent off this um sleep pad so all in all the tent sleep pad cost me 111 quid however it's only really cost me 11 quid because i was gifted by my work a hundred pound love to shop voucher at Christmas so it's basically as I say cost me 11 quid so I've got myself a new tent and the reason I wanted the Fox 2 is it's in a pitch first fly sheet after now I don't really like that idea except for in the summer I don't need to use a fly sheet so if it's a really hot night and I know it's not going to rain when the warmer weather comes I can literally just sleep in in the net without the fly sheet on, you know, in the, the inner. Um, have it all tucked back just in case you do get a spell of rain. Uh, pull the fly sheet down, but yeah, that's my logic behind it. And also, the ratings on the Fox Two um, that they'll stand up to some pretty rough weather. So if I do go somewhere where I think the uh, weather's going to be challenging, I'd like to think that's going to be my go-to tent so yeah that's the new gear this week right i do believe i remember in another video that i've done i did say that i would like to upgrade to the jackal 2 by oex um but i've been watching loads of youtube videos and i think if i have the jackal 2 it's basically just going to be a major upgrade to the Iena 2 obviously um, so I've, I've gone with the Fox 2 as I've already says but another thing with the Jackal 2 I'm not gonna lie it looks like a phenomenal piece of kit however it just seems that little bit too big for the kind of camping that I'm doing the stealth camping not so much the wild camping it wouldn't be an issue but um, the Jackal 2 does seem like it needs a lot of room to pitch up uh, so as I say from what I've seen from the videos the Fox 2 what won me over is I can use it in a pitch first so in the hot weather I don't have to have that fly sheet on and therefore um, I can stay nice and cool without the mozzies and the midges biting me so yeah
that was my de uh, decision there. Can't get my words out yet again. Um, but no. Um, yeah, like I've said, the Iena, it wasn't designed to be uh, used up Mount Everest or Mount Everest. That's pushing it a bit, isn't it? You know, Kilimanjaro would be pushing it a little bit, but I mean, Ben Nevis or Snowdon, you know, you don't expect to be in a budget tent up them kind of, you know, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, however, as I've already touched upon, I've already said so, the kind of camping this moron does, ample enough for me, ample enough. So, you'd think that I was actually trying to uh, advocate OEX, wouldn't you? <laughs> but no, what I like about OEX is it, it's just an affordable brand. You know, no airs and graces, it's just, you know, it does what it's designed to do, you know, it will get you out there. So inside the tent we have the new OEX sleep pad, the old Traverse 5. In fact, it's actually a lot thicker than my uh, the one that got burst, pierced, whatever you want to call it. Oh, the OEX pillow and the sleeping bag same as usual the old selfie stick already run out of charge so thanks to the power bank we are going to soon be back in business uh, nothing else to report in there in the old sleep quarters what I haven't done tonight he's done a temperature check have I The old trusty uh, thermometer, and I can tell you before I even look at that, it is cold. <laughs> well, I can see my breath, but it don't seem to be picking it up on there. But anyway, three degrees Celsius. That'll explain why I'm starting to get a bit <laughs> in the chair. The chair. <clears throat> Whoa, so much logs on the floor. Lantern's still on. I'm looking forward to cooking some food so I can get the uh, the stove on the go and get warmed up in the tent. But, oh, sorry about that. One thing I didn't think I'd need tonight, and I'm an idiot for not bringing it, the old tent eater. Looking at the temperature uh, on the weather forecast, thought, no, nah, I ain't going to need that tonight. How wrong was I? Oh well, I'll just do a bit of walking around, get the blood circulating, I'll be alright. I mean, it does look a cosy camp, it's a very chilled out one. I've been very chilled out, sat in the... Oh, I don't get the chair. Hold on. Still can't see it. See my breath now with the light on. It's definitely cold. It is actually really quite light tonight with the moon. Even though it's covered by the clouds. It's throwing out a lot of light. In the sky, obviously. And then, obviously, that's my tent. My lantern inside.
still about three degrees. Certainly feeling it tonight, really feeling it. Right, so I've got inside the tent because I am really cold. I don't normally feel the cold like I do tonight, but I am really feeling it tonight. And uh, I've got the old uh, stove on the go. Currently heating up some uh, water and milk for the old, what is it? Pasta and sauce, cheese, leek and ham. Yeah, very simple tonight, I know. Just literally gonna throw that in. Obviously this one on the top's just to give it a lid. That's all that is, that's why that file which I use as heat shields in the top. But yeah, uh, throw the pasta and sauce in. And then I've got, oh, what did I do with it? Bit of old, the old uh, turkey and gammon. From yesterday's Christmas dinner, the obligatory Boxing Day leftovers, you know how it goes. Uh, yeah. Already feel warmer, already just being in the tent. But once this stove's been on for a good 20 minutes, the temperature in here will certainly rock it. So. And then maybe I can go and sit back outside. And oh yes. Definitely, definitely don't want to be burning the older uh, footprint again, do I? Idiot. Right, so in the tin, I've just chucked in the older uh, gammon and turkey from yesterday. And it currently looks like that. So I'm just going to let that do its magic. Had to open the uh, the tent door to let the steam out because obviously, as you can see, condensation. Not long to go now. Well, that's finishing off. I think I'm going to have me uh, a lovely can of Colesberg export. Ooh. Some lovely weather. Yep, yeah, it's raining again. I did say earlier it was going to rain. But it's nice and cosy in here. So I'll be getting some sleep in a minute. Getting a lovely sleeping bag, getting some shut eye. Oh, yes. Is there anything more cosy than listening to the rain on your tent while you're snug in your sleeping bag? I don't think so. It's quite tranquil. Yeah, I'll we'll get some shut eye. And I'm going to turn in the lamp out. That lamp has been on the entire time since I hung it up outside. How many bars of battery has it got left? Let's have a look. Finally, down to one bar out of four. However, I had used it before, I hadn't uh, recharged it, so it's going pretty strong. I'll recharge it while I'm uh, asleep, I think. But yeah, up till now, impressive bit of kit. Anyway, it's over and out from me.
Well, it's about quarter to eight in the morning. As you can hear, the rain has been relentless. Quite cosy when you're in the tent, but not nice to get up to. And I've got to some point pack away in this miserable rain, but. This is what this idiot chooses to do. Right, get in the kettle on, I know that. Have some breakfast, drink loads of tea, the usual. It'd be interesting in the daytime, in the daylight, to actually see my surroundings properly and actually see where I actually pitched up a sort of blind. Looking forward to that. Kettle's on. Still raining. No sign of it slowing down today. But who cares? I'm not in any rush to pack up today. However, obviously all my kits inside the tent, so I'll pack everything up, put it into my bag. Literally everything is in here. So what I'll do then is before I get out of the tent, I'll put the waterproofs on, then I can pack the tent up. So, I'm not going to be majorly affected by the rain. Uh, probably just going to chill out for a bit now. Might even stick some uh, YouTube on, just watch some music videos or whatever, have my breakfast, drink my tea when the kettle's finally boiled. This is keeping it real. She's ready. Sorted. It's certainly safe to say that I will not be sitting in the chair this morning. In hindsight, I should have kept to my guns last night and set the tarp up over the tent so I've got somewhere to sit in the morning. But no, I'm reined in now. I should have, yeah, I really should have set the tarp up. That's an epic fail from my point, but oh well. Um, the new sleep pad, uh, that was a success. Really nice and comfortable. Happy with that. But like I says, definitely going to repair the other one. Always worth having a spare in case this one gets punctured, but also uh, Millie can use it for uh, scouts rather than a roll mat. Um, I think that'd be much better this day and age. I think roll mats are uh, a bit old school, very basic, even for my standard. Uh, kettle's on for the second time, just lying here waiting for it to boil. Won't be long, I can see the steam coming out of it. Um, there's been no wind at all last night. It's starting to get a bit of wind this morning, which is nice because it's actually air in the uh, between the, the inner and the outer out. There is a bit of condensation. With that much rain, it is to be expected. 
but last night you could hear a pin drop in these woods not not slightest bit of wind whatsoever I do like camping when there's a bit of wind point the back of this tent into it and it gives it nice nice airflow no condensation whatsoever but there was no option for that last night so but I'm bone dry good old tents hold up again just pretty much fully recharged this uh, lamp with my power bank but I had this thing on pretty much all the time I was outside as you've seen I had it hanging in here um, I even fell asleep at one point with it on but it's been on for hours on end um, and was, it was still going I did charge it because it was finally down to uh, We've got four four lights. It was down to the last light, but it, it was still going strong. So, yeah, well impressed with this little bit of kit. Second brew of the day. I mean, I am slowly packing away bit by bit <clears throat> in between drinking tea and stuffing my face with cow biscuits. Where are they? I should have said, where's the empty wrapper? Uh, Earlier, well, it weren't earlier on, was it? Well, earlier on in the video, which would have been last night, early part of the video, I mentioned about uh, somebody saying about these uh, inners touching the outer and causing condensation to get in the tent. And as I showed you yesterday, if you taught the guy lines the correct way and you stake it out correctly, obviously don't overdo it. But no, there's no, no touching of the inner touching the outer fly sheet, as you can see. Yeah, I think I think that's proved my case. Uh, I would consider that's actually a little tip if you own one of these tents. So there is one tip this week. There was something else that put me off uh, the Jackal 2 that I was talking about last night as my alternative tent and looking at the Jackal 2 maybe somebody might correct me if I'm wrong but it looks like in the, the porch area it has the an extra sheet like a ground sheet that comes out into the porch <clears throat> uh, that's one thing that was a big no-no for me as you can see, I do a lot of living in my porch, I mean cooking, um, and some of the places I visit, you know, I mean, look at look how rough that ground is, all the woodland debris and what, whatnot. Um, I prefer to put one of these tarpaulins down instead. Obviously I pull it back for cooking. As we uh, seen last week, I, I don't know why I did it, but I... Uh, I was cooking on top of that, which is something I don't normally do. Maybe the uh, the beer had taken effect. But yeah, I do prefer to put my own tarp down. And then, because that's not attached, I can sort of hang that on the line um, individually, uh, brush it down, hang it on the line, and then when it's dry, pack it up and I'll put that in my, uh, my pack. Uh, the bit that got burnt last last week I've cut that off I can't remember if I've spoken about that but I've, I've also got some extra tarp so um, 
it's good to have the extra tarp because if you go somewhere and it's really bad the grain like I did last week the uh, where it's really brambly I'd only got the one tarp ideally I could have done me putting a couple down for extra protection but you know that's history now but yeah so I might be wrong it might be detachable on the jackal but I just don't like the idea of putting I mean I'd still probably roll it up and keep it sort of tucked back and put my own tarp down but to me that'd be a waste what I have noticed what I didn't notice while I was giving it all that stopped raining so this is my chance now to uh, perhaps pack up and get out of here so I don't have to put all the waterproofs on something less to dry but no my luck I'll pack up as soon as I head out here yeah, it'll hammer it down because that's usually what happens but yeah that, that's the plan that is the plan probably use the last drop of my water and my final brew give me some uh, get me ass out of here power which quite frankly I could stay here all day I do say that a lot but I'm in no rush to go nowhere today. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I can't I can't imagine anybody's actually seen me here. Uh, I still haven't. Sorry. I uh, still haven't even looked outside yet in the daytime to actually see. You know, because remember I came here and it's pitch black. So it'll be interesting. All I know is I'm heading in that direction. Right, so I've got the boots on. I'm going out for the very first time outside today. Be interesting to actually see where I've pitched up. Now it's daytime. You you guys will be seeing this for the first time as well, just like, like myself. So uh, let's have a look. Temperature is it? Nine degrees. Yeah, I reckon I'm busted. Oh well. There must be a path or something over there, which obviously you've just seen as a, a dog walker walking across there. He did look at me a few times. Who knows what he thinks. Oh well, I'm not doing any harm. I'm gonna have a little adventure over there and see if it is a, a footpath. What I can tell you is there's a nice little drop down there.
that's blatantly a, a footpath. Blatantly a trail. me all packed up that's where I was my extra bag clearly I maintenance uh, bag of rubbish as you can see apart from where my uh, fat bum's been and flattened the ground Leave no trace. So I'm going to bring this to an end. I'm going to say the same old stuff that I always say. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of this wacky stuff, um, maybe help support the channel, give me a like, give me a subscribe. It's all massively appreciated. And I'll leave a link to last week's video at the end of this one. Thank you and goodbye.